so in the last video i just told you that um, we use uh, there's a basic conceptual difference between the leben cup algorithm and the brute force or you can say the naive string matching algorithm now i said i told you that in case of rabin karp algorithm we do not consider as a text as a sequence of characters but rather we consider it as a some combination of digits or you can say as a number then the question is how can you convert english for example just for simple purposes we are just con considering a uh, english as the base language the you know string can be of in any language it can be in hindi it can be in sanskrit it can be uh, whatever language uh, can be so it can be any special symbols also okay so because all these characters they are actually representing some uh, symbols only then how can we convert a given uh, given text or given sequence of character into a number just for this we need some kind of preliminary information about how the numbers are introduced how we introduce the number system and how these things are working so consider it like this uh, how the numbers are actually introduced see um, this is a small small story behind this right so you can consider it like this assuming that this is some kind of barn or a field okay it is a very very simple example actually you must you may have heard this example before but i'm just explaining this example so that we can move forward on this okay and this is you and i only told you this story before but still i'm considering to i'm telling this again because this is interesting this way we are we can understand it better and assuming that these are some kind of goats right so these are some kind of goats okay now what you have to do is every morning you have to take these goats out of this barn so barn is kind of a farm actually okay so you have to take these goats out of this barn in the morning right and you have so many goats that you cannot even count actually there uh, there's one more thing so you don't know how to count okay so you have to take these goats out of the barn and you have to you know take them to the village or some field so that they can have some grass or something and then you have to bring these goats back in the evening but the only problem is there's a person like me who is there and what i have to do is whenever you you know uh, take these goats out every day i try to steal your goats and so that i can have a party in the evening so i try to see, steal your goats every day and then when you come back in the evening because you don't know how to count so you will not be sure that how many goats you know you brought so after some days you notice that some number of goats are missing then the only question is if you cannot count how many goats you have if you don't know how to count then how will you ensure that whatever number of goats you took in the morning the same number of goats you brought back in, brought back in the evening and this is a very you know this is very very simple example how can you do it uh, maybe you can mark them but if you are going to mark them then it is not going to work because again you, you need to do have some count of uh, some kind of countings right but there is so many uh, ways but just a very simple way is take a knapsack or take take a bag so knapsack is uh, just like a bag only so take a bag now whenever a goat comes out of the barn put a stone inside this bag if the second goat come out on in the from the barn put the second stone if the third goat come out of the barn put the third stone if the fourth goat goat come out of the barn put the fourth stone and so on so after that after some time your entire bag will be full of stones and then when you take these goats back in the barn in the evening take one store stone out of this bag then take another stone out of this bag now if all the goats are inside the barn and there are some stones which are left then you can be sure that maybe some of the goats are missing and you'll know how many goats are missing that will be the number of stones will be there but here why why i told you the story because here this you know these stones are used to count the numbers and what is so you know special about these stones actually these stones are acting as a symbols these are acting as a symbols to count right and this is the first kind of number system which was introduced that is a unary number system okay so unary number system or what is a unary number system the unary number system means you are going to have only one kind of symbol for example here the only one kind of symbol is a stone so you have only one kind of symbol assume that is represented by 
zero and this unit number system is represented by a base which is one so every number you are going to make all those numbers are made up of only one kind of symbol and this is the thing which is also used in abacus abacus kind of game so if for example you have four zeros that means the number is represented as four in decimal okay if you have three zeros the number that you are representing that is three in decimal so number of zeros that you have or you can say number of stones that you have all those stones are representing a digit okay then the second kind of number system is the binary number system is a binary number system with the base which is equal to two but it's a binary number system binary means we are going to use two symbols so unary here we have we have un and here we have by so binary array ary means some numbers so binary means we are going to have two symbols which are zero and one so every number that we are going to make that will be in the combination of zero and one for example we can have a numbers like one zero one one so this is a number which is in binary number system that is two symbols okay see these zero and this one itself is it is not having any kind of meaning but they are just symbols which are formed together to represent a number so here when we have 1011 or even if we have a number which is 11 with base 2 it is representing some decimal value and the decimal value is actually equivalent to 3 that you know how to convert this number to a decimal number okay then we have a third kind of number system which is a ternary number system ternary means we are going to have bases 3 so it that means we are having three symbols right in the same way we have quinary number system that means the basis four it means we have four symbols when we have in the same way you can have any kind of number system it can have any base for example base 30 base 40 base 50 if a number system is having base 30 that means it is having 30 unique symbols right in the same way the most popular number system that we use in daily life is the octal number system which is base 8 so it is having eight symbols which are 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 and the most most popular the most popular which is used by human in daily life is a decimal number system which is having a base which is equal to 10 so this base 10 that means we are going to have total 10 symbols which are 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 right so if we have a combination of these digits for example the combination is 9 to 9 with base 10 so what is this value so this value can be evaluated as 9 into 10 raised to power 2 plus 2 into 10 raised to power 1 plus 9 into 10 raised to power 0 that is why it is called as 929 so 929 okay in the same way we can have a number system which is a hexadecimal number system now there is a very interesting fact between the hexadecimal number system the fact is like this B we are going to use symbols from 0 to 9 but then we are not going to use a symbol which is 10 why because 10 is already using the number 0 and it is already using the number 1 0 and 1 is already utilized between the number 0 to 9 so hence we have to introduce some new symbols which are different as compared to already known symbols so we introduce a symbol which is capital A for 10 capital B for 11 capital C for 12 capital D for 13 capital E for 14 and capital F for 15 so B is 11 C 12 D 13 E 14 or F 15 so we are going to have these numbers or you can say uh, a b c d f so they are just representing symbols okay so here we have a total of 16 unique symbols now assuming that you want to show all the 26 english characters right in the number system so all the 26 into english characters that means we have capital a b c d up to so on capital z right so we can use a number system which is having assume it is a new number system and uh, which is having a base as uh, assuming 36 because there are 26 English characters so base 36 means we can have symbols from 0 to 9 and then we have symbols from A to capital Z so if we have a number or if we have a sequence of characters which are A C B D right so with the base 36 that means you can convert this number system as D into 36 raised to power 0 plus B into 36 raised to power 1 plus c into 36 raised to power 2 plus d into 36 raised to power 3 right so this is a actually a into 36 raised to power 3 and this way you can evaluate their uh, numerical value in in terms of 
decimal so whatever number we are going to get that will be in the base 10 as a number system but anyways here just to uh, just i want to show you that a given a pattern right in the in the uh, rabin carp algorithm in the rabin carp algorithm as i told you given a pattern and a text so maybe this is some kind of text it may be having some digits which may be in english language which are a b a c d b a and given a pattern assuming the pattern is c d b so this is a pattern now this pattern is in a combination of subsequence of uh, d uh, characters now to convert this sequence of characters we just have to use a number system which is number system which is having a base which is equivalent to you know uh, 36 so that you can uh, convert this uh, given pattern into some sequence of uh, digits so that we can find a numerical value of this right numerical value right and then we are going to find a numerical value of these three uh, digits here and then we are going to compare their numerical values now if the numerical values is matching that means we found the given pattern inside the text but if it is not matching then we have to find the numerical value of the next three digits if it is matching that means we found the text if it is not matching then we have to find the numerical value of next three digits if it is not matching then we have to find the numerical value of next three digits until we found the given uh, pattern inside this given text okay so this is the ribbon cup algorithm and uh, for simplicity purposes uh, because if we are going to use a number system which base 36 that means it is going to become very very typical it is going to become very very complicated to evaluate hence i'm just going to use some kind of decimal numbers to elaborate the entire concept uh, how we implement this ribbon carp algorithm and this why we take modulus actually we also require modulus and how do we actually pre-process the data so that it is going to take less amount of time to compare with those real data and then we are going to again how do we actually how do we shift this entire window because this is called as a window i'm saying this as, as a window it is a window it is a window it is a window so um, how do we actually shift this window and when we are shifting this video window then how do we evaluate the value of the next given four digits okay so let us move on to the next video where we are going to explain how to pre-process the data